In Milwaukee, I stayed in a hotel named The Fister. That was the name, The Fister. And, and obviously, they were sensitive to it sounding weird, so they added a P at the front, so it was the Puffister. <laughs> hey, it worked for Michelle Puffeifer. <laughs> and that hotel was started by a man named Guido Fister. I thought, my name's Guido Fister, why don't I go into hospitality? <laughs> Guido Fister, his name sounds like an ethnic slur. Get out of here, you Guido Fister! <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but I'm kind of obsessed with not being interested in fashion. <laughs> it's uh, something I care deeply not about. And I'm aware that not being into fashion is a fashion choice, right? How annoying is that? It's like, oh, you're not into fashion? That means you're in a norm core. Why can't I just wear clothes to cover my disgusting body? <laughs> Why must it be a choice? Because the only choice I make when it comes to clothing is, does it still fit me? <laughs> I don't know if you've had an opportunity to fat out of clothes. <laughs> That's a special feeling. <laughs> there are watershed moments in your life, right? When you hold your newborn child or you fat out of a t-shirt. <laughs> it's amazing because you don't even go to the obvious conclusion. You're like, well, this sure used to fit. <laughs> I haven't grown since I was a teenager. Oh, I'm a fat ass. Well, time for a burrito. I don't know. The best is when you pack for a trip and you fat out of clothes, but you don't realize until you get there. <laughs> you sit there and you go, well, I guess I could wear that as long as I don't breathe out. Or sit down. You ever wear a shirt you can't sit down in? Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna stand. I know it's Thanksgiving, I'm more thankful standing. Better angle for carving. I still have all the clothes that don't fit me. They're in my closet, in case I have a dramatic weight loss over a weekend. It's ridiculous, it's like I'm curating an exhibit of my weight gain. Well, that suit was from 30 pounds ago, and that sweater was from last winter, and this shirt, this shirt never fit. <laughs> Have you done that? Have you bought clothes that don't fit, thinking that'll be the incentive to lose weight? It's like, well, I've only gained weight for the last 40 years. Maybe this shirt will turn it around. <laughs> How'd you lose weight? I bought a shirt. It worked. No, fashion's kind of wasted on me. You know, like those fashion shows? To me, fashion shows just look like skinny teenagers walking around in their parents' clothes looking for food. <laughs> wow, there's no food out there. All right, I'll change my outfit and look again. Fashion shows are rather absurd when you consider they're just people sitting around watching people walk around in clothes, which is what people do in clothes every day. But at fashion shows, they're so fascinated, they're like, oh my gosh, oh wow, look at that person walking close. How do they do it? Oh, if only we could watch them do laundry. And we all know what a fashion show is, because we've seen it on TV. In December, they televise the Victoria's Secret fashion show, which is excellent, by the way. <laughs> well, that one's different, because there's angels, so there's a spiritual aspect <laughs> to the thongs they're peddling. It's interesting, all the models are beautiful. You ever notice that? You're like, yeah, Jim, that's the point. <laughs> no, but all the models, they pick people that would look good in any clothing. Like, if you want me to buy a suit, show me Michael Moore looking good in it. <laughs> and I'm not picking on Michael Moore. I'm friends with him. I like Michael Moore. And not just because he proves you don't need to shower to be famous. <laughs> you ever see Michael Moore on television? He looks like he's been robbed of everything he owns. <laughs> Are you the victim of a shipwreck? <laughs> what happened? Pull it together. 
Heather, you won an Academy Award! Stop shopping at the Lost and Found! But I understand reality. Fashion's not gonna change his life. It's not gonna change my life. I look the same whether I'm wearing a t-shirt or a tux. I still look like someone who eats fast food. Probably because I do eat fast food. I look the way I look. Look, I didn't vote for Trump, but I walked around New York City and everyone the week after the election looked at me like, you did it. <laughs> you did it. And I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> but after a couple of days, I was like, did I do it? <laughs> I know people are scared the, about Trump being president, but I can tell you as a straight white male, I feel like I'll be okay. <laughs> My wife hates that joke. And I love her, but not enough to get rid of that joke. I would do anything for my wife. I, I'm aware of that. But there are people that are more romantic. Prince Edward abdicated his right to the English throne for the woman he loved. Isn't that unbelievable? He was forced to choose between the woman he loved or being king of England. And that idiot <laughs> chose the broad. Now, I'm sure in that moment it was the right decision, and I'm happily married, but even in the best relationship, each person has thoughts where they go, I've made an enormous mistake. <laughs> but we never thought, I could have been king of England. <laughs> Do you think Prince Edward really ever got over that? Every time he had to empty the trash, he's like, the king of England doesn't have to empty trash. <laughs> The King of England can chat with his ex on Facebook. <laughs> can you imagine what kind of news event that abdication was in the UK? There, there must have been, he's gone mad. We should get him to hospital. <laughs> Jim, your British accent is getting worse. <laughs> Why wouldn't you take five minutes and learn a good accent? It's just lazy. It's just lazy. And it stinks getting older and fatter. And I used to be something back in the day, boys. I used to be something. I did. I used to run cross country. You Google it. I think I still hold the state record for taking the most <laughs> in the woods. But I'm on a diet now. I'm eating nothing but fruit loops. But my wife has me on a... My wife has me on a diet now where I can have one cheat day. So I can have a hamburger with the cheese and the bun one day a week. Or anytime I drive by a fast food restaurant when she's not with me in the car. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> she's a stickler too, I'll tell you what. She'd be up here sleeping at 2.30 in the morning, the dog go down there, bark at the door for 10 minutes. She don't hear nothing. She's racked out. I got to go down there and let the dog out. So the next day I go down there, I'm kind of hungry. I pour a little, little bowl of Cap'n Crunch down there. I hear, get out of Cap'n Crunch! <laughs> what the hell? I should have barked when I poured that Cap'n Crunch in there, but I should have done. It sucks getting old and fat, I tell you. I remember when my beard turned white, my, my, my wife was like trying to comfort me. Oh, that's okay, honey. I like somebody with a little salt and pepper in their beard. Made me feel a little better. Then she goes, it's the corner in your teeth that's disgusting. <laughs> I was going to say broccoli, but none of y'all believe I eat broccoli. All right, so I'd say that. Uh, here's the thing about getting older. You start losing your daggum memory. I, can't, I have a hard time remembering stuff now. It's so frustrating. Have you ever left your groceries on the roof of your car? Yeah, for three weeks? You ever did that? I'm a hypochondriac. I always think I'm dying of something, I'm freaking out. Had a red blotch right there one time for a week. It's freaking me out. So I go get a biopsy on it. Tested positive for picante sauce. <laughs> Idiot. Cost me $1,000 to do that. Good news is he wrote me a prescription for napkins, so that's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> but I always think I'm dying. Don't ever look nothing up on the internet, because it ain't good. It's always lupus or Lou Gehrig's. That's what it is. One of them two. 
I think I got both of them damn diseases. <laughs> Seen a commercial the other day for breast implant leakage. I had every damn symptom of a breast implant leakage in there. These stupid things. I ain't kidding with you. Don't ever look it up. It's always lupus. Except for one time I had a lump right here. And honestly, like, what the hell? I look it up. Oh, brain cancer. That's, that's it for me. I'm a dead man. I got brain cancer. You never learn nothing on the internet medically looking it up. Except one time I did. I found out that Jock Itch is also the name of a porn star in France. <laughs> And what is it about getting in your mid-50s, your big toenails like a manhole cover all of a sudden? <laughs> Holy smokes, I went to clip it the other day, the pin popped out of the clipper system in there. <laughs> Holy smokes. Finally, I chip it off, hits my kid in the head, knocks him out, he's bleeding from the eyeball. It's gotta be hard to work in a hospital. That hospital lighting, everyone looks sick in that hospital lighting. I walked in, they're like, we should get you to the ER. <laughs> I'm just here to see my wife. Well, you have jaundice. <laughs> see, compared, oh my gosh, I have jaundice too. We all have jaundice. <laughs> when my wife would nap, I'd go to the cafeteria. Hospitals have the most cutting edge medical equipment, but they're still serving food like it's Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> How about selling an MRI machine and getting a pasta station? <laughs> Jim, you're a monster. <laughs> There's different sections in hospitals. There's the emergency room, the intensive care unit, which sounds scary, but I don't know why anyone would want to stay anywhere but the intensive care unit. It kind of implies the rest of the hospital is like, look, we care, but we're not going to be a spaz about it. <laughs> I get a phone call, I'm going to take it, right? We're like the mediocre care unit. <laughs> which is better than we couldn't care less unit. Those guys are whore. <laughs> it was wild. My wife was in surgery for 10 hours, and before the surgery, the surgeon told me, he goes, halfway through, I'll probably stop and get lunch. <laughs> I don't need to know that. <laughs> Why even tell me that? Was he afraid I was gonna run into him in the cafeteria? <laughs> I get these cravings. <laughs> Those Snickers commercials are true. <laughs> but he was a great brain surgeon. We learn later on that he's like the best. I don't know how they determine the best brain surgeon. You know, maybe there's a competition. <laughs> America's got tumors. <laughs> Heidi Klum thought he was the best. The best brain surgeon. Isn't it enough that someone's a brain surgeon? <laughs> None of us can even get in med school. A brain surgeon goes to medical school afterwards, specializes in neurology, after that specializes in surgery of the brain, and we're like, yeah, but are they any good? <laughs> yeah, they're a brain surgeon. You know what they do with the bad brain surgeons? They don't let them become brain surgeons. <laughs> Can you imagine the pressure on a brain surgeon? At no point during their workday can they say, hey, it ain't brain surgery. <laughs> Cause it's always brain surgery. Every day. What you do at work, honey? Brain surgery. <laughs> That's fine. You want some fruit? Never. <laughs> My wife had a, she had an amazing team of doctors. She had the brain surgeon. She also had an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Ear, nose, and throat, that kind of sounds like they didn't make the cut for brain surgeon. <laughs> I want to be a brain surgeon. You know what? Let's stick with the ears, nose, and throat. <laughs> You'd be better with the things surrounding the brain. Can I have the eyes? You know what? Let's stick with the ears, nose, and throat. We promised the eyes to the nerd at Lens Crafters. <laughs> Why pick on optometry? Those ear, nose, and throat doctors, they must look at dentists and think, just teeth? That's it? What about the tongue? Not the tongue, just the teeth. <laughs> you just work on teeth, surgery on teeth? Oh, I don't do the surgery, that's the orthodontist. I mostly scrape stuff off of teeth. <laughs> while I listen to 80s music. 
I love Debbie Gibson. <laughs> when you think about it, dentists, they don't do the surgery. They don't even clean the teeth. They're like, you guys do everything, and then I'll come in and jab them with a sharp object. <laughs> well, I listen to Debbie. We run our kids up to the Walmart last year to see the Christmas village up there. We wasn't there more than 10 minutes. Somebody was already running a meth lab out of the gingerbread house. <laughs> the hell? I mean, I love shopping at Walmart, but dadgum, that's like a meth maker's paradise in there, ain't it? <laughs> Walmart's the only store in the world you can go and see somebody buying 16 boxes of cough syrup and some garden hose. Nobody thinks that's weird. You ever shot at Walmart after midnight? Holy smokes. Oh, they ought to charge a cover charge in there after midnight. That gum, it's like a casting call for Ripley's Believe It or Not in that place. If you've never been to the circus, go to Walmart after midnight. You're bound to see a couple of bearded women, a toothless wonder, and the fattest man in the world on a scooter up there. They got good deals after midnight, though. Last time I was up there after midnight, 75% off self-esteem. <laughs> That's right, I walked in there like this, I walked out like this, I was like this. Good. That's right. You can get everything at Walmart, except good customer service. Holy smokes. Here's my impression of the hiring practices at Walmart. Well, let me ask you this. You ever cared about anything in your entire life? <laughs> no? All right, you start Tuesday, all right? <laughs> we'll put you in the DVD department. My wife wanted to go to Walmart. She's trying to find the cheapest mop she could get for something she's doing. So we go to Walmart, get a mop, $4.95. Go up there to pay for the mop, and the lady goes, you want to buy the protection on this? <laughs> you know what? I think we're going to risk it this time. All right. Got a 95% chance we're going to throw that away when we're done with it anyway. <laughs> At our super Walmart, you can get your hair cut. They got everything. My buddy got his hair cut at Walmart. $20 for a haircut. Actually, $5 for a haircut. $15 for the hat you got to wear next three weeks. <laughs> got a doctor's office up at the Walmart. Holy smokes. People going in there. I was there the day they gave a guy three months to live in there. And uh, he ended up getting hired as a door greeter once he walked out that door. <laughs> I had to go get a flu shot one time. I didn't want to go to the doctor. And my wife goes, well, shoot, run up to Walmart. They're giving flu shots. Are you kidding me? I ain't getting a flu shot at Walmart. <laughs> that gum, normally I got to get vaccinated before I go in there. <laughs> Get a flu shot at Walmart. The flu's the last thing I'm worried about at Walmart, all right? That gun, they probably got Ebola behind a box in there somewhere I didn't know about. I was up there one time, there's a dude out front in a hazmat suit. I'm like, is it safe to go in there? He goes, yeah, why? I go, you're in a hazmat suit. He goes, I know, I work here. I'm collecting the carts. <laughs> Lovely weather out there. <laughs> I prefer the cold to hot. I do. I know that's surprising looking at me, given I, I look like a snowman. But I prefer the cold, you know? Last summer, I was in Las Vegas. It was 114 degrees. 114 degrees. You can actually hear the sun at that point. It, like, <laughs> it didn't feel safe. I was like, are we supposed to be here? <laughs> 114, like you're never at a friend's house, you're like, warm in here. Yeah, yeah, I set the thermostat to 114. <laughs> That's how I like it, I'm part lizard. <laughs> Thermostats don't even go up that high. Meat thermometers do. <laughs> I think God is just cooking people in Vegas. Like, <laughs> oh, that one's smoking, I love smoked meat. 
It was 114 degrees, which was shocking, but not as shocking as how casually Las Vegas residents just went about their day in that heat. It was like, you're like, let's play Frisbee. Time to walk the dog. I was like, get inside. The earth is on fire. Get inside and beg for God's forgiveness. You've obviously angered him. That's why Vegas is called Sin City. It's the same temperature as hell. I have a friend from Vegas. I told him it was 114. He goes, that's nothing. I'm like, no, that's something. That's actually the temperature you boil water at. He's like, it's not that bad. Not if you're making ramen. He's like, that's our summer. That's not summer. Summer is when you barbecue on a grill, not the sidewalk. It's so weird to be places where summer is the enemy. I was, like in the Southwest, they talk about summer like it's an ex-lover they never want to see again. Uh, we gotta get out of here before summer gets here. <laughs> Last year, I couldn't leave my house when summer was here. You ever notice the further north you go, the more obsessed people are with summer? Like, I, in February, I was in Bangor, Maine and everyone was talking about summer. Everyone I met, they're like, you gotta come back during summer, you gotta come back. <laughs> Which is a strange way to greet someone. Hi, how are you? Come back later. <laughs> and it was everyone. Or, you gotta come back during summer, you gotta, um, yeah, but I'm here now. <laughs> Just make sure you come back. I, I didn't wanna come the first time. <laughs> but I love how northern cities sell summer. They're like, summer here is unbelievable. It's perfect. For one twelfth of the year, it's ideal. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a tundra filled with alcoholism and depression. <laughs> but for those 13 odd days, it's worth it. Well, it's cold winter time again. You like the winter? I hate it. I like summer better than winter. That winter kills me. he has been in any for the last five days. <laughs> I ain't kidding, I could flash a cop and not get in any trouble right now. It snowed the other day, I could only pee my initials in the snow, all right? But my upper body loves cold weather, my lower body can't handle it. I wish they'd get together on the weather, it gets cold out. You could play this little piggy on my daggum neck. He hates it, but they look, these little piggies went to market. Yeah, well, that little hog stayed home. All right. I'll guarantee you that. It's cold everywhere. I was in Los Angeles, California. It's so cold, I seen a junkie with his tongue stuck to the spoon. All right. <laughs> My wife's from Wisconsin. You think you guys get cold? Go to Wisconsin. Holy smokes. We's up there Thanksgiving. You know how cold it was up there? <laughs> that sucked. Uh, <laughs> It was so cold in Wisconsin, the ice cream machine at McDonald's was working. <laughs> now, I like hot weather. I like when it's hot and humid. I love that. I lived in Florida for a long time. I love hot and humid. It was so hot down there one time, I seen a squirrel putting talcum powder on his nuts. <laughs> Now, I don't like it when it's hot and humid and I gotta wear blue jeans everywhere. Holy mackerel, I'll walk like this. Uh, we filmed four episodes of Swamp People in my pants. All right. It was bad. I went in for a physical, dropped my underbritches, three mushrooms fell out. Right. I ain't kidding. That explains why I kept getting followed by that truffle pig right there. I knew that, but I was two days away from them declaring my crotch a wetland area. But they try to scare everybody now with the heat, don't they? Try to scare you, make it hotter than it is. When I was growing up, 99 degrees, 99 degrees. Now it's 99 degrees out, but the feels like temperature's 103. <laughs> the feels like, who come up with that? A fisherman, the feels like temperature? Stupid, you know what? My wiener's three inches, but it feels like nine. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Well, my wife sent me up to the grocery store all by myself the other day to get some feminine products. You know, 
celery, carrots, lettuce. <laughs> I had to buy some chewing tobacco so I didn't look like a pajama boy sissy in there. <laughs> Anybody chew tobacco? Yeah. That guy, ma'am, you? All right, perfect, that's good. <laughs> I like chewing tobacco, but I only do it because it keeps you from eating sugar and eating bad food late at night. So you can see that's working out real good for me right now. That's, now I'm fat and I got bad teeth, what the hell? I hate that grocery store self-checkout. What in the world? All the enjoyment of working at the store without the satisfaction of getting a paycheck. That's always nice. You like self-checkout? I hate it. Every time I go in there, I get stuck behind some idiot trying to find a barcode on a cucumber in there. You ever done this? You ever buy a Kit Kat bar? You got like 12 items, you got a Kit Kat bar, and then they look at you and go, you gonna take that or you want that in the bag? That's when you know you're a fat ass right there. All right. I know. They pissed me off last week. They done that with potato salad I had in there. I know. And they put a napkin and a fork on the deck, I'm thankful. 